Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So, what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this absolute value, uh, inequal, absolute value inequality. So, to graph an absolute value inequality, what we're going to want to do is graph it just like it's an absolute value equation. So, that's why I have the parent graph of an absolute value equation, the table for an absolute value equation, as well as the transformations for the absolute value equation. Um, so, we're going to graph this just like an absolute value equation, but then we want to um, be able to use our shading or our test points to be able to determine the shading. So, before we graph it, it is important to identify well, will our graph be solid? like an equation, or it'll be dashed, meaning the, whatever the, line, the graph is is not going to be a part of the solution. So since my inequality here is greater than, it's going to be dashed. Anytime it's greater than or less than, it's dashed. Greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, it will be solid, meaning it will be a part of the solution. Meaning any point that you choose that's on the line will make your absolute value inequality true. All right, so now what we need to do is identify, well, what is my 2 and 3? How is that going to affect my parent graph? Um, of for the absolute value. And what the 2 and the 3 is, there's, that's going to change my new vertex. Notice the vertex here is at 0, 0. That's where the graph is going to change your directions. Well, now my vertex is in the form of hk. And remember, the form is x opposite of h plus k. So x opposite of 2, we can rewrite x plus 2 as x opposite of negative 2. That means my vertex is not 2, but it's negative 2 comma 3. All right. So what that tells me, instead of my vertex being at 0, 0, now it's at negative 2, positive 3. So my graph is being shifted 2 units to the left and 3 units up. Okay. So now I go over 2 units, 1, 2, and then up 3, 1, 2, 3. So now that is my new vertex. Besides that, my graph is not being stretched or compressed at all or being reflected. So therefore, it's going to form the same pattern as an absolute value equation, or the parent graph of the absolute value equation, which is over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2. And again, remember, it's dashed. So when I go, when I go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2, these are all dashed points. Or I'm sorry, dashed lines, right? But the last thing I want to do is, well, all right, so the graph is not a part of the solution. Any point that's on this equation, when I plug in for x and y, is going to be false. Um, it's not going to make the inequality true. But what about the points that are outside of my inequality equation? Are those going to be true or false? Or the ones inside, will those be true and false? So the best thing to do is choose a test point. Any point that is not lying the line, either inside or outside, it doesn't matter. The best point to choose, as long as your equation does not go through it, is 0, 0. So to test 0, 0, just like I told you to test any point that's on the line, you just plug in 0 in for x and 0 in for y. And what I have here is 0 plus 2 plus 3. So two, 0 plus 2 is 2. Absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. In this case, I have 0 is greater than 5. Well, that is obviously false. So it's false outside of the absolute value. That means any other point that I plot outside this absolute value um, graph is going to be false as well. That means all the points inside or above are going to be true. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an absolute value inequality. Thanks.